So I have, let's see, we have, I segmented them into, so I have fasting modalities, frequencies, duration. So we've talked about a few of these, intermittent fasting. The FMD, actually, I want to circle back on that. You you mentioned that you've done FMDs in the past, and I think you've done, you've done like a, let's call it the Prolon protocol, where it's relatively, it's low protein, high carbohydrate. And I think you've also done a, an FMD that's, not the not the opposite, but you've done a relative like seven hundred calories, low carb. Yeah, I've done like ketogenic FMD. Yeah, I've done them across the board. And do you notice a difference in those protocols? I notice a difference in my enjoyment level, as counterintuitive as it is. First of all, that it's just so easy for me to just eat one meal a day. So whenever I'm FMDing, I'm only doing it as one meal a day. Like the way I look at it is, if I'm going to blow my load, like do it once, right? Like I'm going to have my 750 calories in one sitting. I'm not going to sprinkle it out over the course of the day, which is not how they advise you do it uh, via prolong. So every time I do it, I do it by just consuming that input at dinner. And that way it also gets to scratch the social itch, which is I'm going to sit there and have dinner with somebody. Like at least I can do this thing. So that said, I actually prefer doing a very high carb low protein, almost no protein, low fat version where I'm getting fat only basically my favorite meal when I'm prolonging, or, I mean, I'm just using that term, but you know what I mean is, um, is salad and rice. 750 calories of salad and rice is like from a volume metric standpoint, actually pleasing enough that I feel like I'm eating. The problem with doing the 750 calorie a day, keto diet, which probably in the end is more satiating, is just volumetrically, it's trivial, right? Especially with the stuff I like to eat, macadamia nuts, avocado. I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're olive oil, like you're, you're kind of done, you know, you're, you're sort of, there's, you don't get to eat a whole heck of a lot. So, but again, I want to take a step back from all of this. I'm not even suggesting that I have a clue what the optimal fasting regimen is whether you should be doing a five-day FMD quarterly, whether you should be doing a seven-day fast quarterly, whether you should be doing a five-day fast water-only quarterly, whether you should be doing a day a week, you know, with nothing in it. I mean, that's the whole point here. Nobody knows the answer to this question because it would be impossible to study this in humans using the metrics that are necessary to actually extrapolate to the things that matter most with the technology we have today, we just don't have the tools developed to do this. So obviously the FMD has been probably studied, the five-day FMD has been studied more than any of these other routines because it's at least been studied in Longo's lab. But, you know, we're comparing it to what? We're comparing it to someone eating a standard American diet. Well, a lot of things are better than a standard American diet. So, and, and I think Walter is honest in his assessment of that, which is, look, He's not, I don't think he's claiming this is the optimal way. He's claiming this is an effective way. In other words, it's not the most efficacious. It's not the quote unquote dietary regimen that will produce the best result. It is one that is very easy to follow. For that reason, I think it's, you know, it's a great tool. We use it constantly with our patients, but I'm looking for something different, right? I'm looking for the best, not the easiest.